Okay, so decided to do a Dwarf Fortress Let's Play, and uh, whoops, um, it will be taking place for as long as I can keep the fortress alive, and I'm intending to uh, add in people who want to be named uh, into the fortress, and I'm going to start with people off of the forums at josephvstalin.com. Uh, so yeah, but let's go ahead and pick world gen first. I'm gonna do medium size, short history. Uh, okay. I'm using a graphics pack for it. It's the Iron Hand graphics pack. It's there's like three popular ones and this is probably the second most popular. I like it because of the way that it handles uh smoothed walls. It makes them square instead of like a octagon. But uh yeah, Dwarf Fortress, if you don't know, is a game that uh was initially all in ASCII characters and so this right here is like deluxe edition graphics but the gameplay is just amazing I don't think I've found a, a deeper game alright so we have a world uh, and go ahead and pick one yeah I've got a lot of different regions going that's mostly because once I lose on a region or on a world, I uh, just don't go back to it. And uh, losing in Dwarf Fortress is a pretty big part of it. And we're going to do Fortress mode, obviously. I might do Adventure mode if I feel so inclined at a point in the future. Uh, so I will find the embark spot and then I will be back. Alright, so uh, I think I found a suitable embark spot. It's um, kind of right on the edge of the mountain. You can see on the, the world map we're on the, the far western edge of the world. But we're right up next to this huge mountain range here. And we even have a little bit of that inside of our embark zone. Uh, but I picked it because it's got a river. There's lots of trees and plants. Uh, but most importantly, when I was generating this world, I forgot to turn off aquifers, and this is the only area with a river that I could find that does not have an aquifer, and aquifers are just terrible, uh, if you know what that means. But, uh, yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and start the embark screen, and it's going to tell me that I might experience lag because of a large area. That doesn't particularly matter. Um, so I'm going to be picking the uh, Lazy Noob Pack deployment because I almost always end up using this same like setup if I do it myself anyways. Uh, having two miners, one of them is the expedition leader, uh, one woodcutter slash wood craftsman, a mason slash architect and mechanic, and lastly the two farmers and craftsman and broker. Um, and then it deploys you with an anvil as well, so it does work out pretty well. Um, but yeah, I will be back as soon as I've finished customizing these dwarves, and I will be uh, uh, changing the outload a little bit. Alright, so uh, I got our first seven set up. Uh, naturally, uh, the leader of the fort is going to have to be our glorious leader, uh, Joseph Stalin. Uh, so he is our expedition leader and uh, a miner. We have Pedro, and by the way, for all of these uh, names that I'll be taking, I'm just going to remove the numbers. Uh, so we have Pedro3131 as our other miner, a uh, very skilled miner with nine points in that skill. Uh, then we have Cyber Viking one uh, the first one to respond to my interest post, and I took his phrase rather literally. He asked uh, to ha for me to have his axe, so he is going to hold that axe, and he's going to be our woodcutter. Um, then we have Linen Cat. Uh, he's our uh, a mason, our architect, and our uh, 
our er, and our mechanic. So he's going to be very busy. And Chafe Lagell, this guy. Oh man, you guys need to go on down to the forums, check that out. Uh, but in any case, he's he's going to have to learn a thing or two about farming uh, if he's going to live in the Democratic Republic of North Korea, uh, and that is where he's planning to go, so that's why he's going to be our elite farmer. Uh, then we have me as the uh, the broker and stone crafter. Uh, not very good at either of those things, but what can I say? Uh, then we have uh, Luki Wiki uh, as our other farmer, uh, and so we have got a pretty balanced layout. We've got one anvil, uh, plenty of food and drink to start off, start us off for a while, and uh, I think we're ready to embark. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's it's thinking at the moment. Rather hard, it seems. All right, well, I'm going to cut it until it decides to continue working. Okay, and so literally, not even a second after I press the button, uh, it has started uh, to load in, and you're going to have to brace for a little bit while the music plays. It's going to be very loud. I'll turn down the volume once I get in. But in any case, we've arrived at after a long journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond our harsh... Oh, beyond. Our house trek has finally ended. Our party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Umgankaten, which is our civilization. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance, whether by bolt, plow, or hook. Provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter it entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the wolves get hungry. New chapter of Dwarven history begins here at this place, Katen Narban, which means channeled cradles. Strike the earth. Okay, so uh, very pumped up about getting this fortress ready, and I'm first thing I'm gonna do is pause the game and adjust the volume settings. Much lower. Uh, I think that's good, and uh, it looks like it's actually really cold uh, where we embarked on the this embark locator screen. We had uh, or it had told us that this would be a rather warm location, so maybe it'll start heating up. Um, but in any case, you can see over there on the far right uh, a map, and along this map you'll notice there's some blue tiles. That's going to be water, and in fact, if I go down a level you can see there's just water all over uh, and there's the river but it's frozen solid and it's covered with snow right now so there's no way we're gonna be able to utilize that uh, for the time being uh, but I am familiar with this uh, with how to use the keys so I'm going to be tabbing out of the little side menu there um, and it looks like over here is pretty much just going to be a bunch of water and I don't want our dwarves walking over there except to go perhaps explore a little bit of fort area uh, and over here we've got a vast forest uh, just chock full of trees no plants though but I'm sure once the snow uh, melts away we'll get some plants um, but there's our dwarves sitting on top of our uh, of our little wagon that we brought with us all of our goods inside uh, and so we're going to begin by designating some things. Uh, first off, we'll have Cyber Viking chop down some trees for us. Uh, and I want to go ahead and enter the, uh, the next Z tile down so I can tell where I'm going to be digging uh, to sort of begin our fortress. And uh, at first, we're not going to be uh, utilizing a very uh, large portion of the map. We're just going to try to get the, the bare minimum uh, so that once we have a sort of a 
working se settlement that we can move over and expand onto bigger and better things. Uh, so I'm going to dig straight into the ground there. And uh, actually, I'm going to zoom out real quick and just see if this whole map is indeed... Oh my, yes, it's very, very large. Um, but it looks like it's almost completely flat as well. There is a bit of a mountain range down there in the southwest, uh, but there's a lot of water in that mountain range, and in fact it just levels off right there. Um, so those are possible locations for expansion in the future. Oh my, hold on a sec. Okay, and we're back. Uh, I did forget one of the uh, important things about Dwarf Fortress, and that's that it's in an alpha, uh, and so it is prone sometimes to crash, but I don't think that was actually the reason it crashed. I'm pretty sure it has to do with the fact that I uh, zoomed out on such a huge map and then tried to zoom in all at once, uh, leading to that crash. But that's no matter because we're right back at the same place, same dwarves, uh, and that is one of the cool things about Dwarf Fortress is that even though every time you generate a world it's completely random, uh, the the actual world itself will stay persistent. Uh, so I was able to pick the same location and we have all the same dwarves and everybody's here so uh, let's go ahead and just pretend that never happened. Um, so go ahead and designate these trees to be cut uh, and then again we want to find a suitable uh, area to build our first little expansion, our first little settlement. And uh, for now, we want to keep it close to the river, uh, but obviously not too close because, as you'll learn, dwarves are not meant for swimming. In fact, they don't really like water very much at all. Um, and so we'll build it near enough to the river that I can divert water if it ever unfreezes and create some farmland. Um, but here we go, we have a little tiny expansion down here. I'm just going to build out a few little hallways in order to uh, maximize our space efficiency. Uh, and we've got a little farm here and we want to build just a little outcropping like that and then we'll go back up to the surface I'm gonna designate uh, not designate, I'm gonna require that someone build me a carpenter's, oh can't yet because someone has to still get the wood but in any case we'll just let it run for a little bit here while our dwarves get to work mining this out and uh, chopping down those trees alright so there they go there goes uh, Joseph Stalin and Pedro mining out our first little expansion and just out of curiosity yes this is all made of sand here so that's not it's kind of good and it's kind of bad uh, you need sand to build certain things in this game namely glass uh, but you can't use sand or soil uh, in order to build constructions you have to use stone uh, and so this will be useful to us much later in the game but for now it's just kind of uh, uh, impediment to progress. And we do have Cyber Viking chopping down a few trees already, so I'm going to go ahead and tell him to build a carpenter's workshop and just stick it right here outside. Uh, also, I should probably check. Uh, it looks like nothing's here except for us, uh, the stray llama that came with our cart and a bunch of goats and llamas so that's okay just go ahead and let things play uh, and you notice in the top right there it says idlers for it just means that all the people who don't have the ability to chop down trees or mine out stone and dirt are going to have nothing to do because I haven't assigned them any jobs yet uh, and that's fine because there's nothing for them to do at the moment if there were any plants around I'd have them go out and start gathering things but for now They'll just sit around and drink and eat food out of our precious, precious store that we have. Alright, it looks like they're almost finished with the farm.
Oh, whoa, it looks like we've already had quite a massive uh, thawing here just in the few minutes that we've been on the map, and uh, I expect the water will start thawing out rather soon as well. Um, since it has occurred, I will start gathering some plants off the surface here, and it's very, very vegetative here. A lot of plants and trees. But this is good. Our dwarves don't like being cold, and they don't like being wet, and snow is both of those things. Alright, so while that's happening, I'm going to uh, designate out another little uh, expansion, and this is just going to go down and sort of number one survey what kind of stone we're gonna experience and number two allow us to start forging out uh, some rooms and cyber vikings chopping down the last tree uh, so he should start constructing his yeah there he goes constructing his workshop oh and my we've already struck magnetite and bituminous coal uh, both of which are necessary to build um, essentially steel and iron. All of the metalled goods uh, are going to require coal. And then, of course, uh, magnetite is a form of iron. And it looks like this is a very resource-rich uh, map that we're on. Um, let's see, what's on this layer? Siltstone. I'm not sure if siltstone produces an, a rock. Uh, with it, but we'll go ahead and dig this out and investigate. Uh, and every time you send a miner to go carve out stone, it has a chance of leaving behind uh, some some ore or a rock or a boulder. Um, and that's what you're seeing here: is some magnetite has been left behind from when we carved out these staircases. Um, and now, hopefully, we'll see some siltstone left behind as they carve out uh, this little section here and yes it does leave behind a rock our miners aren't terribly experienced yet so they're not gonna uh, for every time they uh, drill into a rock there's less of a chance that they'll actually get stone out of it but once they start digging for a while they'll become much more experienced and our chances will go up alright so I'll dig out a little tiny hallway here and uh, start getting some bedrooms up and running actually when I and you'll probably notice throughout this series that I am um, I don't like asymmetrical asymmetrical shapes um, and sometimes that drives me to do less than functional things with my fortress layout uh, but in any case here we go we've had there are seven starting dwarves we will have eight bedrooms in the beginning because we will have a migrant wave and it's always best to have these things prepared. And I don't know why or what this is, it looks like there's still snow covering uh, the far eastern part of the map but everywhere else appears to have thawed. Go ahead and unpause it again. Now that we have a little bit of stone, I'm going to designate that uh, our mason, that's Linen Cat, go out and start uh, making us some uh, some doors and most importantly a floodgate right now. And I'll have uh, Cyber Viking start making us some beds. Our three idlers are me and the two farmers, which is good because they have nothing assigned yet. Everyone else is doing their job. Okay, so this uh, the mason's workshop is complete. Gonna have him start off with floodgate and then some doors just continually. And he'll go down and retrieve stone from the areas that we've dug out and he'll bring it back up to his workshop and as time goes on we'll want to uh, put the workshop inside of the fortress but since this is the very beginning 
uh, and we're just setting things up. And there's a, basically there's not enough room downstairs to put anything besides just beds. Uh, we're gonna have to wait on that. Doesn't look like there's a lot of wildlife in this forest. The river is still frozen, which is kind of uh, unsettling. We really need uh, water, because that's how we can start farming. Alright, so our floodgate is finished, it looks like. I'll go place this. And this floodgate will just prevent water from uh, crashing down into the lower depths of our fortress. Since That's especially important since we're going to be using water from a river. And a river has an unlimited supply of water. Alright, just had a little technical hiccup, uh, which I edited out. Alright, our floodgate's placed. Now we need to tell uh, Lin and Cat to build us a, a mechanics workshop so he can start placing down some levers. And I'll cancel his current build order. And again, it looks like everyone's pretty much busy at the moment. getting these rooms dug out still. Oh, it looks like there's, maybe is that fish, frog, I can't really tell. Something's jumping around over here in this pond. Unfortunately, we do not have a fisher dwarf, so we're not going to be able to utilize any of that. They're all over the place. What are these things? Fireflies. That's okay. Fireflies can't hurt dwarves. Something is over here. What is this? A rat crawling around in the snow over there. Oh, and it looks like the water has indeed started to thaw, at least over here on the uh, the part that has not remained snowy. So it looks like this might actually be permanently snowy. It might change in the summer when it gets a little bit warmer, but uh, if it's the spring already, we're not probably going to see too much change on that front. And we'll go ahead and order up some mechanisms. So Lin and Cat will go grab stone and start constructing those. And our miners have finished digging out the bedrooms. So the next thing that they should be constructing is our dining room. And just lay out a small little dining room there. And then also another hallway, an expansionary hallway, which will wrap around the back. And I'll tell my dwarves not to worry about that right now by removing the designation closest to them. We have a few, yeah, a few rock mechanisms should be constructed by now. 
Um, so what I'm going to do after he finishes this current one is I'm going to tell Leninkat to start building a lever uh, and then attaching that lever to our floodgate. Designate a little bit more wood to be cut out by uh, Cyber Viking. Alright, so he has just finished that mechanism. I'm going to go and tell him to construct a lever. And uh, we'll put the lever up by the wagon. Actually, we'll put it by the staircase because that's where people will sort of be congregating. Oh, he's currently drinking, it looks like, so he's not going to be focusing on constructing that lever. And one thing about this game is that dwarves certainly love their alcohol. They will go through 40 barrels of alcohol within days. So it's very important that you keep them well stocked. And oh, it's just started raining here. Um, that is going to create a little bit of a happiness problem with our dwarves. They don't like being wet at all on their outside. Okay, and we've just dug out our dining room. Gonna tell them to start digging out that little expansionary hallway next. But it looks like they're going to eat first or something. Just make one more rock mechanism because we're going to need it in order to link to the floodgate. Yeah, we need two mechanisms to do that. We only have one at the moment. Let's see what other civilizations are in the area. Well, we know of one other civilization at the moment. That's the, the unnamed Batman civilization. Uh, and when they're talking about Batman, they're not talking about, you know, crime-fighting billionaires. They're talking about grotesque half-human, half-bats that will rip dwarves to shreds and carry them off into the mountains very quickly. Right, it looks like he's finished that other mechanism, so I'm going to tell him to uh, attach that to the floodgate. And now he will create a connection between the lever and the floodgate so that when we pull the lever, the floodgate will rise or drop depending on its current status. And I'm actually kind of worried about the size and volume of water that's going to be pouring into our fortress very shortly. Um, it's certainly a lot more than I thought it would be when I looked at the frozen water. Oh, he's still attaching a mechanism. Alright, so he's finished with that. I'm gonna have him pull the lever. And now this should uh, make it. Yep, there it goes, it's dropped. Now I'll have my miner dig out one square. That one square right there is all that's holding back the fords of the river. So here we go. It's pouring in. We can see the water height is pretty high actually, it's at four already right there. Um, and dwarves can't swim any higher than if the water is at three. So let's see. Yeah, we'll have to let a little bit more water in.
Alright, I think that's probably enough water. So I'll have the dwarves go pull the lever and uh, shut the floodgate. Alright, and now all that will happen is the uh, the existing water that's in this chute going here uh, through the farm is going to just cover the entire square and probably a little bit beyond that, but it shouldn't reach the staircase. At least the downwards one. Let's actually check the water height. Yeah, it's already pretty much tapered off. And uh, we've now got ourselves that expansionary hallway complete. Uh, and then it's telling us that there's damp stone here. That actually is just saying that because there's water one level above. In reality, there's there's no body of water near that. And we're going to carve out another room here to serve as our makeshift hospital for the moment. I don't think we're going to get any engineer injuries before we move over to the uh, the real fortress, but uh, if we do, we'll have to give them what little care we can. Oh my, this is just full of fish. Yes, there is damp stone there. Don't worry about it. Okay. And so it, every time that you find damp stone, it gives you an indicator and tells you uh, that you found it and it stops your stops your game uh, which is kind of annoying but it's also very necessary because if you are digging into what you think is a small pond and it turns out that it's a giant aquifer and you've just let that hoard of water into your fortress pretty much everyone's gonna die uh, so it's very good to have that notice and it looks like the water is actually starting to pour down uh, into our actual fortress here. Let's see. Oh, I have actually overlooked a very important detail uh, when creating this floodgate system. Uh, that is the fact that um, water can move diagonally. So it is going through this hole right here, and now it has proceeded to cover the entire area in water. And let's see, is there any area I can build a floodgate on? Uh, looks like our only hope at the moment is to construct some doors. And our dwarves downstairs should be okay for a little bit. But it's a very precarious situation that we're at right now. Because the water is continuing to flood. And if it gets too much higher, then it's going to reach a point uh, where we can no longer... Oh, and in fact, it's already filled up the entire uh, lower chambers that we dug out earlier to explore the kind of stone we're getting. So it's created a waterfall actually inside of our fortress here. And normally a waterfall inside your fortress would be a great thing, but um, this is not the good kind of waterfall. This is the kind of waterfall that kills people. I'm not too worried about the safety of our dwarves lives. Uh, if it all comes down to it. I can dig a uh, 
a staircase into the ground that will allow me to dig right back on up to the surface. Looks like we might actually rapidly be approaching that situation. Because now that the uh, lower levels have been filled, uh, the actual lower fortress itself is starting to become full of water. Um, and once this fills, then the, the staircase going down will fill. And lastly, the chamber that allows our mason, who is constructing doors to fix the problem, is going to fill with water. So this is actually a pretty massive oversight on my part. And in fact, it looks like we might have to uh, abandon this site because it has simply been uh, covered in water and we can we have no way of venting it at the moment because we cannot seal it off into the uh, the actual chamber that it's supposed to be in there's one thing that might work if I just dig out more of this surrounding soil here that perhaps our uh, the water will be diverted enough and lower it enough that we can actually uh, cause it to uh, be stopped by placing a floodgate in. But it's going to be really just a race between how fast our miners can mine and how fast the water will flood in. It looks like right now our miners are winning out, but it's pretty close. Partially worked. We're gonna have to dig out a lot more than this though. Now, now there's actually fish inside of our fortress. It's a perch. I don't think it's attacking our dwarves yet. And we're gonna have to continue this expansion out quite a ways it looks like. But in fact, I think we should probably go the other direction so we can lower the overall water level instead of just pushing it down this one side. So our dwarves will continue mining, one from each side. You know things aren't going so great for your fortress when you have perch floating around in your main access. Yep, it looks like we're going to have to abandon this site because it is simply, uh, we cannot build anything more in the water. So that's definitely not the best start to our fortress. Uh, but we still have most of our materials and uh, we do have all the skill that our miners have gained from going there. And look at this, it looks like it has finally thawed over here um, enough that the snow has melted. It, however, has not thawed enough to cause the river to melt, but I expect that will be changing at any moment. What I'd really like to do is build a bridge across so that we don't have to 
worry about our dwarves falling underneath. Uh, and I can actually make it out of oak, so let's do that. And our woodcrafter, uh, Cyber Viking, should get over there and start building us a bridge to freedom from the incredible oppression that this river has brought our fortress. So Linen Cat's our architect. He's going over there to start surveying the land so that Cyber Viking can actually construct the bridge. How are we doing on food? Uh, we still have enough food to last for quite a while. doesn't look like our fortress is in jeopardy yet or at least our settlement our fortress has obviously been flooded and it looks like our bridge is almost complete there we are so now we're going to go and we're going to create a more conventional fortress style digging into the side of a mountain and I believe we will just pick the closest mountain which will be this one and it has a lot of siltstone in it so hopefully we get some of that rock there is a bit of a downside to this fortress though and that's that there's no trees on this half of the uh, the river or at least on this portion around our fortress so we won't be able to collect wood as fast as we would in our temporary slot. And again, this is not going to be the final fortress by any means. Uh, but uh, my plans probably are going to lead down over in this direction at some point, or maybe uh, maybe using this sort of a, a base, I don't know. And it does look like there's actually quite a bit of uh, magnetite in this mountain. So we're still very well stocked as far as metal and ores go. Uh, we'll be able to construct those rather easily. Gonna have a uh, Linen Cat construct a small wall around the entrance to our new um, hillside fortress. And I suppose all we have to use for building material is wood at the moment, so that is what the walls will be made of. Not very intimidating, but uh, it'll get the job done. So long as they don't bring fire, it'll get the job done anyways. And I think uh, on the note of having our previous uh, establishment annihilated by a massive flood due to just a small oversight, uh, I will end this current uh, video. Well, it's probably going to be split into a couple of videos, I'm not sure, depending on what the new YouTube time limits are. And I'll pick it back up tomorrow.